What is going on guys? This is Daniel and today I wanted to talk about the Portland Trail Blazers offense. The Blazers are having a very good season. They're 32 and 20 and they're scoring 113 points per 100 possessions, which is ranked 7th in the league. I've enjoyed watching their offense and I thought I'd take a look at some of the most important and interesting aspects of it in this video. So let's get to it. Let's start with the pick and roll as it really is the groundwork of their offense like it is for most NBA teams. And the thing is, defenses have to defend their pick and rolls different than other teams because of the dynamic guards they have. So here in the pick and roll, we see that Gobert comes up to defend Lillard at the point of attack. Usually he drop lower and he has to do that because Lillard is such a pull up threat from three. And this opens the whole game up, particularly for the roll man, as Nurkic can now roll behind Gobert, catch it, and here when there's no defensive rotation, he gets a dunk. Now, teams have been defending the Blazers like this for years, but one big difference this year is the play of Yusuf Nurkic in these short roll situations. He's just flat out better, and here's an example as he catches it on the roll, and there is a defender this time who rotates, but it's a guard, and he shows no hesitation, putting on a nice spin move with a fluid lefty finish. Very nice. Now this is tougher for Nurkic. He again catches it on the short roll after Lord is trapped, but this time he's met by Davis and he looks to pass, but the Pelicans rotated well and there is no blazer open. But again, without much hesitation, he goes right into a post move against one of the best defenders in the league and he makes scoring look easy. And as a team, the Blazers do maximize these short roll opportunities. So Lillard's trap, ball goes to Nurkic, and he's immediately met at the foul line by Harden. Now first off, notice the spacing between Aminu and Harkless. Good separation there, and then McCollum is cutting through the lane. And this is a smart cut because it puts Chris Paul in a tough spot. Paul was zoning up the weak side, but now he has to follow McCollum into the lane. That drags him away from Harkless. Nurkic makes a nice pass, and it's an open three. Lillard and McCollum get many hockey assists just like that because of the fact that they are trapped and guarded so heavily in the pick and roll. And the attention really is justified. Here for example, we see that Jokic is up to about the 3 point line to defend Lillard but we notice that his hands are down and also Murray got stuck on the screen a bit so even when the Nuggets were playing an aggressive style of pick and roll defense, Lillard was still able to find enough space to drain this 3. You can't give him any space. And this is why he's a great player. Give him too much room, he'll hit the three. Come up higher to defend him near the level of the screen, and he might just cross over and beat you to the basket. And he scores on Derek Favors here. What Portland will also do at times is they'll have the screener come up and screen very high for Lillard or McCollum. So on this play, we see Nurkic is setting that screen right near half court, and when he makes contact on the screen, now Lillard can attack Capella with about 35 feet of space, and even for Capella, one of the quickest big men in the league, this is a nearly impossible task because of Lillard's ability to shoot and get to the basket. And what makes it so frustrating for defenses is even when one of the two ball handlers is forced into a mid-range jump shot, that's still a solid option for them. Here, Favors does a good job of defending Lillard in the pick and roll. He doesn't get beat, but Lillard still hits that step back fadeaway, which he's excellent at. Let's just look at the stats. On long mid-range shots, shots outside of 14 feet but inside the three-point line, Lillard is shooting 47% and McCollum is shooting 52%. Both are very good percentages. Moving on, and I want to talk about the Blazers' favorite early offense play as it demonstrates how they hunt for easy baskets and also how their offense plays with good pace. So it starts with one of their guards throwing it to Nurkic out on top and then a flare screen occurs. But what they're really looking for on this flare screen is the slip by Aminu to the basket. They're hoping for some kind of miscommunication on a switch. Now on this play, Utah doesn't switch but Favors overextends toward the ball and that is what allows Aminu to get open on the backdoor slip. This initial action doesn't usually produce a shot, but it definitely can as it can cause miscommunication, and it accomplishes that goal here. This time on the slip, two defenders go to Lehman and that frees up McCollum for the open jumper. 
This time, the Pelicans communicate well as Holiday switches promptly onto Harkless and that backdoor pass isn't available. But Harkless is a surprisingly good post player when he has a mismatch, so the Blazers quickly get it into him and he takes advantage of the size mismatch. On this play, McCollum reverses it to Nurkic, so it's reasonable for the Jazz to expect that a flare screen is going to happen. But McCollum makes a great read with a stop and go backdoor cut against an unexpected defense. Nurkic finds him on a beautiful pass, and it's a layup. Let's watch this play one more time because there are two other reasons why this was able to work. One, Nurkic has really made strides as a passer, which I'll talk even more about later, so he makes this great pass. And two, the Blazers were five out. The whole lane was open, which allowed McCollum to catch it and score the layup. This is another example of how they're well coached spacing wise. The flare screen is a great way to start the play, but most of the time the defense will have it covered, which happens here. But I also like the next option. Once Nurkic sees the flare screen is covered, he'll take a dribble to the opposite direction, and once he takes that dribble, that triggers Collins to set a down screen in the corner for McCollum, and they work an effective dribble pitch action, and on this play, they move it nicely and Nurkic gets a dunk. So this is a nice set, and the Blazers also have a variation that's also effective. It starts the same way, reversal to Nurkic, and you have the flare screen. The difference is McCollum is on the wing instead of in that far corner, and we see why in a moment. After the flare screen isn't open, he'll still get that handoff, but now after setting the flare screen, it's Aminu who comes up to set a screen, and he forms a double screen with Nurkic who's handing off to McCollum. So it's a bit different, Aminu will pop for a 3, and on this play he's open. But immediately I see a concern, Aminu is too close to Harkless, the spacing isn't great. This is a problem because Ingles, who's guarding Harkless, could potentially stunt at Aminu and guard two players at once momentarily. But this is a well-coached team. Harkless cuts on the pass to Aminu, so now Ingles can't fully stunt at Aminu and he has to back up. This allows Aminu to get off a clean look at 3, though he doesn't make it here. Nice change of pace variation that's executed properly. Lastly, let's talk about Nurkic's backdoor passing which is improved from last year. It's a big part of the Blazers offense as he often has the ball on top and is the facilitator with cutters cutting to the basket and moving without the ball. Here's an example as in the flow of the offense he gets it and he rewards Lehman for cutting hard with a crisp backdoor bounce pass. His passing ability is maximized with the Blazers as they even run sets to take advantage of it. Here's a play where they get it to Nurkic at the elbow and you have McCollum cutting off of him, you have Lillard cutting off of him. Neither of them are open so Nurkic goes to set up a dribble handoff with Lillard and when Dame is overplayed, Nurkic finds him back door. What's most impressive is how he's reading the game and throwing passes confidently. So here he catches it on top and he notices that Lehman is cutting to the basket and Holiday has his head turned and Holiday is not attached to the body of Lehman. So he throws the lob and they connect on the alley-oop. And as we watch this play again, we see the anticipation Nurkic shows and also the accuracy on this pass. Here's another good one, Tim Frazier is face guarding Lillard and this is one player in the NBA where Lillard has the size advantage, so Nurkic recognizes this and he throws the over the top lob. And this was an absolute beauty right here. So on this play, Aminu doesn't look open, I mean there's two players right in front of him, including Gobert, but Nurkic shows how gifted he is as a passer as he threads the needle and uses a bounce pass to lead Aminu to the open spot. Now he also does throw a decent amount of ill-advised backdoor passes that result in turnovers, but it's safe to say the positives of his passing outweigh the negatives. And when we look at the stats, his passing growth is clear. Per 36 minutes, he's increased his assists while keeping his turnovers exactly the same pretty much. Well, there you have it guys. The Blazers have a terrific offense thanks to their excellent personnel, but also because they play well together, move and cut off the ball, and their offense and offensive sets flow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.